Can scoliosis lead to osteoporosis? Scoliosis is an unnatural sideways curvature of the spine. And it's not just a curve, it actually has a rotational component within the, that curve that is associated with a twist or turning of the spine. In order for you to be diagnosed as scoliosis, the, cur the curve or Cobb angle measurement must be 10 degrees or greater. And again, there must be a rotational component. This rotational component is typically into the concavity. Now, there's some important things to understand when we look at scoliosis is that there is a curve and there is a turn, which plays in another factor in terms of why people kind of think or may understand that osteoporosis and scoliosis may have some connection. Sco uh, osteoporosis is a condition that makes the bones weak, it makes them brittle, it makes them prone to fractures. Making bones brittle makes them vulnerable to injury, typically compression fractures within the spine. Bone is actually a living tissue. It's repairing itself. It's constantly breaking down old bone and replenishing old bone with new bone. These are done by two different cell types, something called osteoblast cells and osteoclast cells. Clasts are actually breaking down old bone to help replenish old bone, and osteoblasts are actually building bone to help repair or regenerate the bone that the osteoclasts are removing. Osteoporosis is the inability for bones to replace old bone with new bone, meaning the bone isn't being replaced with new bone properly, and this can lead to b brittle bones. This can affect the vertebra, of course. It can affect the pelvis, and it can affect the femurs are the most common areas, because these areas are what's bearing most of the weight, your spine, pelvis, and legs. Now, who is most likely to get scoliosis? Now, unfortunately, scoliosis can affect all ages, but its most prevalent type is an adolescent idiopathic scoliosis. It's normally diagnosed between 10 and 18 years of age. The most prevalent form of, of adult scoliosis is also idiopathic scoliosis and degenerative. Idiopathic scoliosis in adult is the extension of adolescent idiopathic scoliosis that was either left undiagnosed or untreated, and now the scoliosis is becoming more noticeable or progressing in the adult form. We know curves progress in the adult form, and this is a response to gravity over time. Now, the progression is normally very slow. It's slow and steady. It progresses very slow and steady over the years. The degree of progression in the adult form is completely dependent on the size of curve, meaning the bigger the curve you have in the adult, the more likely, the, the faster your curve progresses in the adult versus the size. So a 50 degree curve will progress faster than a 40, and a 40 faster than a 30, and a 30 faster than a 20, and so forth. So therefore, having it the smallest possible curve in the adult form is beneficial. And when the scoliosis also starts to go through this progressive form, it can lead to degenerative changes within the spine because of the asymmetrical weight bearing. Now, degenerative scoliosis is slightly different than adolescent idiopathic scoliosis that goes un undealt with and progresses in the adult stage and shows degenerative signs. Degenerative scoliosis is related to the spine degenerating as a result of some misalignment that goes over, that goes unresolved. Many um, doctors say, oh, this is naturally age-related degeneration, but that's not true because when you examine somebody with degenerative scoliosis, what you're gonna find is that one area of the spine has massive deterioration and the rest of the spine doesn't. So if it was only age-related, the entire spine would be degenerating exactly the same way. But what you're gonna see is where the scoliosis is, is where the majority of the degeneration is, telling us that something initiated that misalignment and it's been degenerating over time, like an unaligned car, one tire will degenerate faster than the other three. It's not the age of the, of, of the tire, it's the abnormal weight bearing. This is definitely more common in, in women than it is the men. And for some reason, it tends to occur or tends to be diagnosed around menopausal changes, somewhere between 50 and 55 years of age for women. So since scoliosis, this degenerative scoliosis, and also idiopathic, adolescent idiopathic scoliosis is also typically more common in women. And it also tends to be diagnosed around that same age. It's also, correlates with who's most likely to get osteoporosis. It tends to be older adults. The mo bone mass does decrease with age, but women are more likely than men. And normally this is due to the same thing, hormonal changes related to menopause. There also could be some genetic factors. I mean, people have smaller frames, tend to have less peak bone mass to draw from. But unfortunately, that the same type of person a, a middle-aged woman going through menopause is most likely the patients could be diagnosed with osteoporosis is also the same 
patient that's most likely to be diagnosed with scoliosis. So is there a connection between scoliosis and osteoporosis? And this is where links kind of get a little unclear, meaning is one causing the other or is it just happening because of time and it's just coincidental that these things are happening at the exact same time? Both these conditions affect the bones of the spine. Osteoporosis most commonly affects, like I said, the hips, it can affect the femurs, it can affect the lumbar spine, but it can also affect wrists. It affects anything that can bear weight most likely, okay? Um, both conditions impair spinal health and function, so the connection between these con conditions are being, very, are being explored at this time, but scoliosis has been linked to low bone mass, and it's kind of unclear what causes what. There are some theories because you see osteoblast, meaning the, bo the bones, that, the cells that actually stimulate bone production, and osteoclasts, the ones that stimulate bone removal, are stimulated by weight bearing. So if we think of a curve like this and gravity's pushing down, the inside of the curve will bear more weight than the outside of the curve because of the, the compression of inside that curve. This is also true with the pelvis, meaning if your spine or your body is shifted off to one side, one leg, one hip is bearing more weight versus the other. Could there possibly be a connection that this negative feedback because of more weight on one side and less weight on the other is stimulating and unstimulating, you would say, these osteoblastic and osteoclastic activity? It's possible. But these studies definitely conclude that there is some type of link between osteoporosis and scoliosis. Studies definitely show there's a prevalence of osteopenia in, in adolescent idiopathic scoliosis. They show much higher rates, suggesting that scoliosis can be contributed toward lower bone mass. Or is it the other way around? The fact that somebody develops lower bone mass, that could be, that could be the reason why somebody develops idiopathic scoliosis. And this is what we don't know. Just because there's a correlation doesn't necessarily mean there's causation when we don't know which one unfortunately happens first. There is a connection between degenerative scoliosis and osteoporosis. Also, it's unclear to know which disease happens first or wh which one causes what. There is a link. Or maybe it's just an indirect link because this is the same age of patient that develops the same problem. Either way, the scoliosis and the osteoporosis leave people prone to injury and they become predisposed to spinal dysfunction, adult spinal deformities, and further progression of their spine. So both scoliosis and osteoporosis definitely affect the bones of the spine. If you know you have scoliosis, especially degenerative scoliosis and osteoporosis, you are the most, they are most prevalent at the exact same time. So if you're in that age group and you're in that gender and you know you have scoliosis or osteoporosis, you want to make sure that you're checking for the other because it's a high likelihood that both those things could be happening. Here at Scoliosis Reduction Center, we offer proactive treatments to number one, deal with the progressive nature of scoliosis. And if the scoliosis is what's triggering the osteoporosis, it makes sense that the straighter your spine becomes, the more symmetrical your weight bearing becomes, the more, the less likely the osteoporosis is to continue over time. And our proactive nature works on strengthening and restoring function back to the spine, its surrounding mus uh, muscles, tissues, and alignment to provide the very best long lasting results as possible. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.